Hello there. Hi, Assalamualaikum. I'm Amna from My English Matters. And today I'm with Madam Azima, where we're going to talk about how to control your emotions in difficult conversations. So before we start, how are you, Madam Azima? I'm doing well. I hope you're okay, Amna. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I'm doing well as well. Okay, so today's topic is about how to control your emotions in difficult conversations. So if you are aware of the current uh, crisis, humanitarian crisis that's going on in the world right now, then you may know that the topic is something that is very emotional. Um, for me personally, I've been watching the videos about uh, Palestine and Israel and it's been heart-wrenching, you know. Um, there are times where I couldn't sleep at night thinking about all those children, uh, those innocent civilians who are being basically annihilated by, you know, the government, the Israeli government, basically, that's what I'm saying. So I, this topic came up to me, uh, came up when I was thinking, like, what can I talk about for this as we record this podcast? So I thought the best thing that we could do is talk about controlling your emotions. So we want to relate it to speaking in English. So relate that, how can we control em emotions when we want to talk about a very difficult topic like this one, right? So I'm going to try to um, talk about that and how you can also apply that at work. Okay, so let me just share my slides first. Okay, so the topic is how to control your emotions in difficult conversations. So these are tips that I want to apply myself because I find that I'm, as a mum of three children, of four children, it has affected me. Okay. Let's go to the first tip. Take a moment to recognize your emotional state, right? Are you feeling angry, defensive, or passionate about the topic? Acknowledging your emotions is the first step to controlling them. So what I want you to do is if you are in a difficult conversation with someone, it could be at work or it could be in your personal life, right? And you want to approach them regarding a topic that is that makes you feel emotional. Maybe you're angry. Maybe you're just upset. Or maybe you're very passionate about that topic. Before you enter the conversation, sit with yourself and ask yourself, what is, what is it that I'm feeling right now? Is it anger? Is it defensive? Or, or, or am I just very passionate about this topic? So when you are able to understand that emotion and see it from a third person perspective, it's, it's easier for you to control it and not let your emotions overcome you as you approach the conversation, right? So that's tip number one. Anything you want to add on? I like this because it does force you to um, calm down and to compose your thoughts to see what's rational, is it irrational um, before you start to speak. Yeah, that's right. I've been watching a lot of debates, especially on YouTube, between those who are pro-Israel and pro-Palestine. And I've been getting some uh, insights from seeing how they, some of them are able to control their emotions, some of them are not so, um, not so skilled at controlling their emotions. So this, that has been helpful as I prepared for this. Stay calm, right? Avoid raising your voice, using aggressive gestures, or displaying signs of frustration. A calm and composed presence will help others take your opinion more seriously. So what basically what this means is that as you enter, so if you applied tip number one, which is acknowledging your emotions, you are better able to control and regulate your emotions. So when you enter the conversation, stay calm calm right avoid raising your voice using aggressive gestures like pointing fingers or you know throwing big gestures like this and then just staying calm so that people can take your opinions seriously when you are too aggressive people may think that you're too emotional and they're not going to take you seriously okay so staying yeah. calm is important but also and at the same time sorry yeah you want to say something yeah when i'm not saying that we should always be calm especially in situations that require you to do yeah take action and be passionate about but 
when we're speaking to when you are, we're speaking to somebody who's opposing your view staying calm will help them to listen to what it is that you want to say rather than judge that anger and not listening to what it is that you want to say hmm yeah it's true i think for some people they actually enjoy being aggressive mm. but for me personally i'm the kind of person who list, tends to listen to people who are more calm because when you're calm you do sound more rational and when you're not when you're too aggressive you're too emotional then you may come across as someone who is irrational and not logical and you're just mm. speaking out feelings okay next one is using i statements so what this means is Using I statements will help you express your perspective without making it sound like an absolute truth. So, for example, you would say, I believe or I think rather than saying you're wrong or you should. So if you've noticed uh, in, during this uh, podcast, I have used words like I believe, I think, because when I say I believe, I think you can't oppose that. You can't say you can't say you're wrong because that's what i believe that's what i think you know what i mean so here's an example of using i believe or i think i mean you can oppose me if i say i believe but i'm not saying that it's the absolute truth it's just my what i believe it's my point of view right so you can't oppose my point of view you can't oppose my, my view what i mean is you can't oppose the fact that it is my point of view so i hope that's clear uh, for example, um, this is a state. Somebody makes the statement: "Focusing on immediate financial gains is the only way to ensure our company's survival in the competitive market." So this is a way that may sound aggressive. You could say, you, you may say, "You're wrong. You should consider the long-term effects of the dis, dis, of this decision on our company's growth." Right? That sounds aggressive because you're using words like "you," "you're wrong," "you should," "you should." Here's a more diplomatic way to say it. I hear what you're saying, but I think it's important to consider the long-term effects of this decision on our company's growth. So basically, it's the same context, but you're just adding that uh, phrase in the beginning. I hear what you're saying, but I think. So it's more diplomatic that way. Again, if you want to come across as aggressive, I know people who enjoy arguing and being aggressive and joining all these debates, then you could use you are wrong, you should. But if you want to be diplomatic, and you really need to look at what is the objective of the conversation. Is it, do you want to debate? Do you want to prove that person wrong? Or do you want to find a common ground between the two, of, between two sides of an opposing party? Or are you just there to share an opinion? So always think about what is the objective of that conversation. Number four, did you have anything to share, madam? Yeah, I was, you were talking about watching debates, right? And as we are watching debates, I think that you can see there's a lot of emotions on both sides, especially if it's a talk show and um, things like that. And you have to understand that the objective is not just to talk about their opinion so that's why they're a bit fired up because they're here to rally support and and to sometimes to create a spectacle sometimes i'm not saying that's that's what they do but to do to to get massive um following or to to get people riled up so mm -hmm. this is why they appear aggressive to us <laughs> to us <laughs> on watching uh, on tv they have to do that so i'm not saying that it's we're not saying it's 100% wrong. We should never do those things. But let's bring it to, I mean, let's take it to our workplace. Mm -hmm. Is it acceptable? Yeah. Right? You have to ask yourself, will your boss um, feel as fired up as you are? Or mm -hmm. just see you as, you know, this is too much, too much drama. This is a <laughs> so you have performance. To, yes, this is a performance. Yes. So I remember I when understand. I was in... I remember when I was in university and then um, I didn't join the debate club, but I think I joined like the first meeting or something. And then I'm not, I, I, I'm not a good debater. I've never debated before and I don't really like debating. It's just not my thing. I, I like 
to I like to teach, I like to talk about things, but not debate. It's just not my cup of tea. So when I joined that, uh, and I remember I, I watched a few of them present, and I was so um, I felt I was like I was in awe of them. I I really I really did admire, admire you know their their guts and how they were able to get everybody riled up and clapping. It was it was like a show. It was like a performance. But yeah, you need to look at the situation. Uh, do you want that kind of performance at work? So yeah, <laughs> unless you are you know riling up your team to get really excited about a specific uh, project or something that you want to achieve, then that's fine. But yeah, you mm. got to look at the circumstances. Mm. All right, next. next tip, number four, is to listen actively. Be open to others' responses and actively listen to their points of view. This demonstrates respect and empathy even if you disagree. So basically what it means is that when you enter a conversation, you got to be able to listen to the other person as well. So before you actually go into that conversation, you got to Go in with the intent, with the objective that I want to achieve this, but I also want to listen to what the other person has to say. Even if it's something that I don't agree with, I'm going to listen to them. I'm going to try to empathize and see where they are coming from. And that is kind of the recipe of making the conversation, the difficult, difficult conversation a success because you're able to understand where they're coming from. And it also helps you to take the focus out of yourself. So if you're always just thinking about, I want to say this, I want to do that, I want them to think this, it kind of, it's kind of, the conversation will be just one-sided and the other person will feel like they it didn't achieve anything. So when you're listening actively, you're looking for a common ground, right? Because you're able to understand them and you maybe you may be able to compromise or just being able to agree to disagree. And also it shows that you are a person who respects them and you empathize and you do your best to empathize even if you disagree. Okay, Madam Asma, if you have anything to say, you just chip in, right? You don't have to wait for me to ask you to share anything. But if you have an experience or a story and you want to share as well, you can. I think, yeah, I, I want to say about listening. When when you have said what you wanted to say and then you pass the ball to them, this is where you remove your judgment, your bias that you have towards them. You have to really listen to what it is they're saying, not, not listen to what you think they are saying. You see? Mm. So that includes... Um, maybe paraphrasing what what you understand what they're saying <laughs> that makes sense so summarizing you can say it summarize um silently or ask them back is this what you mean then yeah. you can react accordingly yeah and another skill of about listening is that you're putting aside your arguments which can be hard for a lot of people you have a big argument and then you let that person talk but a lot of people, when the other person is talking, they're thinking about, okay, I want to say this next. I want to say that next. Or this person is wrong. You know, listening actively means you're putting aside your arguments and doing your best to understand where they're coming from and doing your best to really listen to what they're saying instead of listening but wanting to think about the next uh, point that you want to rebut. Mm. All right. Okay, thanks, madam. Number five, support your opinion with facts, right? When you are emotional, you're going to share. You may feel the need or, you know, you may feel the urge to share your emotions. Like, I was upset, you know, I couldn't sleep last night because thinking about this. When you want to talk to somebody about something that they may oppose or it's a difficult conversation, Support your opinion with facts. It's okay to share some emotions, but make sure it's balanced with some facts, some logic, logic, some some statistics, some uh, evidence, or things that people have said. Right. So here, backing up your opinion with facts and evidence can help you feel more confident and in control. It also makes your argument more compelling and rational, reducing the emotional aspect of 
the dis discussion. So what I would prefer you to do is to, before you enter the conversation, the difficult conversation, is you have to have some points that you want to share that are logical, that are statistics based or, you know, based on somebody, based on an opinion of an expert or people who are on the opposing side's views as well. So that it sounds like you are a person who's not just thinking out of her emotions, but you're thinking out of logic as well and you're being rational. And it also helps you to calm down as you look at your points, as you prepare the points that you want to share, the facts and the logic, it helps you to calm down and stay in control and no, not let your emotions uh, run the conversation. Okay. Yeah. Anything else you want to say, good, madam? Good one. Yeah. Um, reminds me of my past as um, a lecturer. <laughs> right. So when, when we do our research, we do have to look at um, the latest updated research and we have to look at who wrote whatever that research that you're reading, even that person's credibility is sometimes judged. So you have to be careful when you think that you're spewing facts, meaning you're stating a fact, but you're, the person that you're speaking to don't respect that person, the author of that fact. So you have to at least have two or three credible researchers that you're referring to. It has to be credible, mm -hmm. not just to you, but to also to the opposing side. So these are the yeah. things that uh, are things that you have to keep in mind when you do your research and supporting your opinion. Mm -hmm. with and facts. <laughs> yeah, and it's also good to listen or to read the opposing side's views as well in advance, so that mm -hmm. one, you you sound like you've done your research. You sound that you. Uh, are a person who is willing to understand their point of view. And also it helps to make you prepared to answer their opposing views, right? Because you may be sharing your uh, opinion and facts and they come up with something to rebut your argument, but you've already thought about that before. So that helps you to prepare for those kinds of questions where you're able to answer them and respond accordingly. Okay. Yeah. Number six, avoid personal attacks. Now, this can be hard when you feel that you've been wronged, when you feel that you are the victim and you want to personally attack that person, right? It's, it's part of human nature. If somebody attacks you, you feel like you need to defend yourself and you want to attack them and you want to hurt them by personally attacking them. But do your best not to do this when you are emotional. Refrain from making personal attacks or judgments against those who disagree with you. Focus on the issue at hand rather than attacking the character or motives of the other person. All right? So let's take the war in Gaza and uh, against Israel right now. We'll do our best to, as a Muslim, generally, yes, I, of course, my bias uh, is towards the Palestinian people, but as a human, as a human as well, um, my my I, I I would take the side of the human humanitarian. So I would attack if I had, had to debate that. I would attack. I would talk about the the war crimes that the Israeli government are are doing right now and how they are not how they are you know making their own international laws and. Those are the kinds of things that we want to talk about so that we are able to argue about these matters with people who are not emotionally attached to the situation, right? So you're avoiding personal attacks. Yeah. Okay. Number seven, maintain open body language. So if you are with that person, your body language will show your emotional state. Maintain open and non-threatening body language by avoiding crossed arms, pointing fingers, or aggressive postures. I've mentioned this in the uh, top, the half of the podcast about how you don't want to look aggressive by pointing fingers like this, or you know, getting too close to the person that you're talking to. Um, 
if you're crossing arms, it may look like you're defensive. So those types of things, try to sit like you are open to listening to them and make the situation, it will help to diffuse the situation so that it doesn't look like you're there to attack them. All right. And then my last point is to agree to disagree. Right. If a conversation is becoming too emotionally charged, it's fine to agree to disagree and move on to other topics. I was watching this uh, interview uh, online and then these two people, they were in a debate and it got heated. And the person, the host of the show said, OK, um, we're going for a break. I want to come back after the break and after the break. They were okay. They, you know, their emotions had had died down, and it, it seemed that they were more calm, right? So you just have sometimes have to agree to disagree. So this this is a phrase that you can use. Let's agree to disagree on this. I think we have different views, and that's okay. We can focus on the aspects where we do align. Okay. Hmm. All right. So those are my eight tips for how to control your emotions in difficult conversations. So number one was take a moment to recognize your emotional state. Number two, stay calm. Number three, use I statements. Number four, listen actively. Number five, support your opinion with facts. Number six, avoid personal attacks. Number seven, maintain open body language. And number eight, agree to disagree. All right, so that's all for today. I hope you found this episode helpful. And don't forget to join our email list for weekly tips on English. Go to myenglishmatters.com. Once you join, you'll get seven tips to help you speak with confidence. And then we'll get weekly tips and updates from us via email. So that's all for today. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now and assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Bye, everybody.